to the Christian Church on this first day of the week, December 13th, 2015. Thank God for giving me another opportunity to preach and teach the gospel. We don't have much of a battery right here, but uh, I'm going to have to do the best I can, um, make it short and sweet. But we're going to get directly to the point. Last week we talked about not trusting in our riches. You know, when people put their trust in riches instead of the Lord, they end up shipwrecked. They end up in a bad situation because there's nothing that can replace God. Well, today we're going to talk about trusting in the Lord. And we're going to start from Psalm 37, and I'm going to get right to the sermon. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. I pray that your spirit will be with me as I minister the truth. May your spirit empower me to speak those things which you would want to be communicated as it relates to your holy word. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Psalm 37, we're going to take parts of this, this psalm. We've preached on it before. It's a very powerful psalm, and it has a message that tells us, it says, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord. It tells us not to be envious of the evildoers or the wicked. It tells us that God is going to take care of things in his own time. In the meantime, we're to be putting our trust and our hope squarely on the Lord to take care of every need in our life, not putting our trust in perverted words and false doctrines, not doing things as the world does them. But we're supposed to be walking and abiding in the will of God. And the only way we can know the will of God is if we have a personal relationship with him. There is no such thing as someone knowing the Lord without having a personal relationship where you have humbled yourself before God. For God knows everything about you and you cannot manipulate him. So there's no need in trying. If we are putting our confidence in our jobs, in our homes, in our churches, and anything else other than God, we are going to fall miserably short of where we need to be. It is God that guides us and brings us through life. It is God that has got you this far. You think that it's luck? There's no such thing as luck. You understand what I'm saying? If you got out of a jam and you don't know how you got out, it's only because the Lord had mercy on you. Because in most times, we get ourselves in jams because we're doing something we have no business doing. But if you're serving God and you're living holy, God is going to take care of you. Like I said, this psalm is a very powerful psalm. This psalm tells us that a little that a righteous man have is better than the wealth of many wicked. Do you understand that? So living righteous before God, serving God and trusting him is the key to being successful. Not how much money, not how much prestige, not how much power you have. But putting your trust in the Lord. The Bible says that godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing with us when we leave this world. That is the message and the focus. But it talks about in this psalm. How the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. It talks about in this psalm how the wicked put their trust in power and prestige. You have people out here that because they have money, because they have influence, and because they have pull, that they think that everything that, they, that they're doing is because of their prestige and their power. But I have news for you. The Bible says the mouth in verse 30 of this verse 
Psalm 37, the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. You know, it's a whole bunch of foolish talk coming from the world. The world thinks that if you're successful, that if you're on television, that if everybody's talking about you, that somehow you must be doing something right, not the case. See, we're supposed to be speaking of wisdom, talking about the things of God, talking about how better our lives would be if we didn't have all of this sin and all of the stuff that's out here that's prevalent, especially to people who have lots of money. The more money they have, the more access they have to the pleasures and the lusts and the temptations of this world. But the Bible says that the law of his God, speaking of the person that is righteous and speaking of wisdom, the law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide, saying that if you're trusting in the word of God, you will not slide back. The song I played in worship before we began this sermon was never going back. What is there to go back to? You understand? What in the world are you going back to? All of the misery, all of the, all of the paranoia, all of the doubt that we had on how things are going to get any better. We get something and then we see somebody that has more than us and we feel like we can't make it unless we have what they have. That brings you into a state of competition and a state of despair. The Bible says the wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. The Bible says, Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. God is the only one that can get them, us out of the jams that we get ourselves into. But if we trust in this false doctrines that are being prevalent, promulgated around and we trust in these people telling us that if we give this God will bless us with that and we trust in any of this stuff instead of trusting completely in the Lord then we are going to be disappointed and many people walk away from the faith because they trusted some lying prophet told them that if they gave this God would give them a hundred times back what they gave and then they didn't give it and they got angry at God but let me tell you something. God said he's going to deal with the wicked. These people are not righteous. These people are not prophets of God that are teaching this false mess out here. That has caused people to lose their homes. Caused people to lose everything that they've had. And all the people can say is you must not have had enough faith. Do you understand the seriousness of the nature of of the fact that just because you see people prospering, just because you see people with millions and billions of dollars, that doesn't mean that they're going to escape the judgment of God. Because most of the time, people have gotten this fortune by being greedy, by being selfish, by, by uh, stepping over people. They say the people that you step on going up the ladder are the same people you'll see on your way back down. 
See, you got to be very careful how you carry yourself. But I'm telling you, my personal testimony and experience that God will get you through. Even if your finances are not what they should be, God can get you through any challenge because he, the source, has an unlimited amount of resources that he can pull from to take care of you. He can use other people to bless you. I mean, people that are going to help you and not throw it back up in your face every chance they get. Because you got people out here that will do things for you, and the minute they find an opportune time, they will throw it up in your face and want you to become servant, subservient to them because they gave you 20 bucks. You understand there are many people out here that are like that. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand that you have to be smart enough and wise enough to know that if God brought you this far, he's not going to let you fall. Amen? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord up hold of him with his hands. What does it say after that? I have been young and now I am old, yet have I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Do you understand what it's saying? This is not a prosperity verse. This is a verse talking about if you're righteous, doesn't matter if you're broke, God's going to take care of you. Doesn't matter if you're hungry, God's going to feed you. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about you having an account that's so that's so loaded that you don't know what to do with all the money that you've gotten. It's not what it's talking about. So we got to put this gospel in right perspective. We got to tell people not to trust in their riches, not to trust in their prestige, not to trust in their power, not to trust in the fact that people believe everything you say. Because of your status and the title behind your name. Because you got a lot of liars that have big titles. You understand? You got pastors, bishops, false apostles, presidents. You got folks that have big titles. But they constantly speak those things that they ought not to speak. And people believe them. And people get mad at you for telling them the truth. For telling them that Jesus is not the reason for the Christmas season. Folks got mad. I lost a couple more people. You know? Just simply mentioning the fact they get offended. You're not even trying to argue with them or go with it. You're just making general statements and folk get offended. But as I told you last year, if you take a look at it and you break it down, you'll see easily the perversion. It's not something to keep beating a, you know, to keep beating to death. But guess what? This is the time of the year where we got to come from those scriptures because they're coming. You know, Jeremiah is coming. You know, there's a whole lot of verses in there that tie. Not only into the Old Testament, but into what's going on now. When God told Jeremiah to learn not the way of the heathen, guess what? It still applies now. So we're going to be dealing with that. But for right now, we got to understand where our trust is. Because if we love God like we say we do, we would not do things that are intentionally and deliberately offensive to him, would we? You would not blatantly disobey God's commandments if you had a personal relationship with him because not only would you understand God's love and mercy to have spared you this far, but you understand that his wrath and judgment is coming if you continually disregard the truth of the gospel. So I'm keeping it short and sweet. We need to trust in God. We need to put all our trust and confidence in God and no matter how grim things may look, God has a way of turning things around. He's done it time and time again. So put your trust in him. Don't put your trust in what people are saying unless those people are directly pointing you to the right understanding of what scripture is. Then you can follow the truth. But make sure you're doing it because it's the word of God, not simply because of who it is that is telling you to do it.
Amen. And you won't be falling for the okie doke so much as we, as people who are trying to follow the truth of God, it's easy to be caught up by some charismatic personality that wants to manipulate you and deceive you. So be mindful, be sober, and be aware that God's going to get you through whatever it is you're going through. I pray that your faith fail not. You understand? I pray that your faith in God and your faith in Him taking you through, not only bringing you through, but giving you a testimony to help others who are also going through and telling them that God can do anything. With man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for giving me the ability to speak your holy word and the truth of the gospel. I pray that your spirit will empower me to continue to live a life that is a witness to the truth that you are the God that is able to transform our lives into that which is with meaning and that which indeed is successful in you. I pray that you will have mercy upon those who have listened, those that are here and those that are listening by phone. I pray for your grace and mercy upon their lives and that they will come to a deeper understanding and revelation and relationship of you with you and who you are and the things of your word so that they may not be carried astray by false doctrines and perversions that are out here i ask these things in jesus wonderful name amen, amen. god bless you you are dismissed going this grace praise the lord hallelujah